climate change thing is as much about a religion, a new religion, a new materialist religion uh, of globalism than it is about anything else. Is it really the focus on global warming as global warming? Or is it also a little bit the focus on global warming as kind of this ideological struggle that fulfills almost an emotional need for, for many people, much more than an environmental need? What I mean by this is, for example, why is there no you know, Manhattan-like project into nuclear fusion or into nuclear energy in general? To some degree, we're wired to apprehend the apocalypse. And part of the chronic psychological problem of mankind is where to put hell in the apocalypse and Satan for that matter properly and I think we're apocalyptic because everybody knows in their heart of hearts that everything comes to an end and we have to contend with that our lives come to an end the lives of those we love come to an end civilizations come to an end and we also know that there's an association between the morality of our actions and the likelihood of a cataclysmic end and part of the utility of a functioning religious enterprise is to help us manage those apocalyptic visions without them contaminating everything we do. Because it is hard, and, and Bjorn pointed to this, if COVID is a disaster, then it's the only thing you should focus on. And if environmental degradation is a disaster, then it's the only thing you should focus on. But it isn't the only thing you should focus on. And when we panicked about COVID, we blew our supply chains apart. And however many millions of people we might have saved with the COVID reaction, and I'm very dubious about any of those claims, God only knows how many people we're going to doom now because of supply chain disruptions and communication disruptions between, say, Putin and the rest of the world, rest of the world because of COVID lockdowns. Uh, about a billion people are likely to be starving, uh, and this winter it'll probably be even more because we don't have enough food. So One of the ways you produce food in this world is through Fertilizer. Fertilizer is what drives mm -hmm. it. But of course, most fertilizer, most synthetic fertilizer is made with gas. And so when the EU was approached, should we not make more fertilizer for the world? They go, oh, but that's going to make us use more gas. No, I think we'll not do that. There's something morally wrong about this of saying, yeah, you know what? You know, a couple hundred million people are going to starve, but at least we didn't use extra gas. You know, the same way as the much of the rich world is saying to the poor world, you guys, you know, we got rich from using lots of fossil fuels, but you guys, you don't really need that. Which, of course, to a very large extent, leave, means leaving them in poverty. And of course, they don't actually accept to do that. What can you do? How much good will you know cutting a ton of CO2 do? How much will it, uh, uh, you know, good will it do if you recycle a bottle? How much good will it do if you get more fertilizer for poor people? And it turns out, not surprisingly, that most of the things that we focus a lot on are basically feel-good things that'll do very little, even for poor people and even in 100 years. Whereas many of the obvious things are these slightly boring things like getting uh, you know, uh, uh, people with tuberculosis, get them uh, addressed. Remember again, tuberculosis is the world's leading infectious disease killer when there's not COVID. Uh, but we don't care about it because we fixed it 100 years ago in, in, in the rich West. If you configure the apocalypse and hell properly, then you take it upon yourself to carry a very heavy moral burden. And that burden is to put your life together. And that means to be productive and generous and honest and concerned with life more abundant for everyone. And you have to retool your whole psyche in some sense to aim towards that. And that takes, that's 100% dedication and a lifetime of effort. But if you're worshiping at the altar of a false god, let's say, what you're looking for is shortcuts to put yourself to put yourself in a position where you have the moral advantage and where you can claim reputation stakes because of that. And all of this false moral posturing that comes along with these shallow analysis is in my psychological estimation, nothing but a narcissistic trip to replace competence with the false competence of the Machiavellians and the psychopaths. And I worked on the UN report on sustainable development for the Secretary General. I worked on that for a couple of years. And one of the things that really came to the forefront for me, there were two things, three. One is we stupidly overfished and destroyed the oceans. That's a really nasty thing. And we, we didn't have to do that. The, the second was, oh, all the data shows that if you make poor people rich as fast as possible, they stop polluting and start caring about the environment. So 
isn't that something? We could make everyone rich and the planet would be better off. And then the next thing was, well, what's the rank order of importance of our problems? And I, I went back to the UN central agencies, authorities a couple of times, the other people who were working on the report, and there were many of them and said, well, you guys have 200 goals here or whatever it is, 400 or 169. It's like, that's not any goals. Goals have to be prioritized because you can't do 200 things at, a, at the same time and all 200 things aren't of equal importance. And they said, well, there's a constituency for each of these goals and if we prioritize them, we'll annoy someone. It's like, that's not a good reason. 